Your cloud architecture might be designed for agility and scalability, but are you stuck with a hidden monolith? Let's talk about that. Welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider. This channel explores the ins and outs of cloud computing without an agenda or following into a narrative set by big tech marketing. We look at what works and what does not and the actual value of this technology in a balanced and information forward way. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, and comment. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, cloud and AI architect, top 10 cloud and AI influencer, be less geek, and over the hill mountain biker. Let's get started. So this topic is one that uh, has been requested a few times. People talk about uh, you know how to deal with uh, cloud architectures and cloud applications that are more monolithic in nature. In other words, they're basically bound together. So you know your cloud architecture might be designed ultimately for agility and scalability, but you you could be stuck with the fact that the pattern is going to be a hidden monolith. This video explores the potential pitfalls of that, allows you to identify it figure out how it's hindering your progress and what you can do to make progress around it. So let's get into it. So let's define what a monolith application is. So it's like a single giant program where everything front end, back end, database interactions and all the other stuff that lives in an application lives together and is managed, deployed and scaled as one whole piece. So cloud migrations and the adoption of microservices promise, scale, promise scalability, agility and resilience. However, many organizations fall into the trap of lift and shift or superficial modular designs resulting in cloud architectures that beneath the surface replicate the rigidities of a of single points of failure of a traditional monolith. In other words, they're if they're lifted and shifted in many instances, we're not doing anything to them. We're just taking this poorly designed application and putting it in the cloud and, and kind of hoping for the best. And that doesn't seem to be working out. So Let's look at you know, how cloud architectures can become monolithic in disguise, the consequences of doing so, and then hidden monoliths that are out there, and practical steps that you can take to ensure that your cloud environment truly delivers on its promise of flexibility and resilience. In other words, avoiding building application monoliths, or when you see a monolith out there, the ability to break it apart and put it into something that's going to be much more efficient, much more optimized, because it costs you less money to run. And also it's going to be a much better designed architecture that's going to have better resiliency, better agility, you know, and it's going to keep running for you. So let's define some of the mistakes people are making out there. Well, one would be superficial microservices, and this is a hidden monolith. Many systems labeled as microservices still rely on tightly coupled services or a central database creating hidden dependencies and bottlenecks. So this pseudo modular architecture undermines uh, autonomy and scalability echoing monolithic limitations. And so in other words, we're building things with microservices and hope that that will make our applications modern. And in many cases, it's not. All you are doing is putting small services that are clustered together into a single application workspace. And that's not necessarily going to get you to where you're looking to go into getting to a 100% optimized applications. We saw this many times in the last uh, you know, 10 years since microservices was a thing, people will re-architect their system, you know, using Kubernetes and containers or whatever, uh, cloud native features, and in modernizing them, they'll just service enable them and put in microservices around them. That doesn't necessarily get you away from building a monolithic application. You have the potential of not building a monolithic application, but that comes down to the architecture. Your ability to do things in such a way where you're putting the components of the application running on the platforms where they're gonna be most optimized. We're optimized in tuning, tuning the applications to run on the platforms, and that can take on several different types of architectures. Typically, it's not gonna be a single coupled application, which is what a monolithic application is. The other big one would be lift and shift pitfalls. So simply moving a monolithic application into the cloud often replicates the same architectural weaknesses without re-architecting. For cloud native patterns, these workloads suffer from poor scalability, higher costs, and brittle deployments. So I, I can't stress this enough. You're not going to get your architecture magically fixed when you move it into the cloud. And I think people believe this. 
uh, when cloud first started out, they were lifting and shifting thousands of applications and pushing them into the cloud. And they found out that there was no uh, getting away from a poorly designed application. So, you know, like I always say, crap on premise, premises, and, you know, put in the cloud is just going to be crap on the cloud. And it's going to have the same performance issues. And even worse, because you're going to pay for the inefficiencies. Got to remember, cloud providers are utility. Uh, they prov they charge you for uh, CPU utilization, network utilization, IO utilization, storage utilization. You got to pay for that all. Where in an on-prem system, that's typically going to be a sunk cost. In other words, you own the hardware. So you're going to get a large cloud bill based on the fact that you have these inefficiencies in the applications. In fact, many of the repatriations going on right now are reacting to the fact that they move these applications into the cloud without understanding how these inefficiencies would cost them money. And they're not necessarily willing to pay to modernize those systems, so they're putting them back on prem. Uh, and you don't, you don't want to be part of that club. And that's a big club right now. So the next thing to consider would be centralized control and governance. So cloud environments often centralize control through shared service gateways or orchestration layers. So while these are convenient, those central points can become bottlenecks or single points of failure, reducing resilience and undermining the benefits of a distributed design. So if we're pushing everything into a single platform space and pushing the applications into the same uh, VM or the same cloud platform that we're leveraging, uh, it's not necessarily going to end well for you because you're creating these coupled systems where they're running some sort of orchestration layer on top of the application and it's carrying out the processes and things have been tightly coupled within that application. So in other words, the data and the application logic, the behavior and the data is living closely together. So in doing that and not distributing loads, workloads, we're not optimizing those pieces of the application for the particular platform space, virtual machines that we're running. And so we're going to force everything on a single platform where some components of the application are going to be perfectly fine and efficient and optimized running on that platform. Many more will not be. And so in other words, if you're doing things in a central way, you're going to be inviting trouble in the fact that you're going to have a single point of failure problem within these systems. That orchestration stops running, the platform stops running, uh, you're down. And, uh, and, you know, in many cases, there's pretty good uptime records with these things. It doesn't, these applications don't go down much anymore, but it's also costing you money. And that's kind of the previous point we made. So that's not necessarily a good thing to do. So next would be data coupling and shared state uh, reliance. And this would be relying on shared databases or global state. And it's a common cloud architecture pattern that I'm seeing out there appear and distributed on the surface. Ultimately, these are not the right thing to do. This tight coupling leads to cascading failures and complicated scaling opposing the decoupled principles of cloud native design. So it's good to decouple things. Now, it's always not going to be the case. There's never going to be one thing you do at, that's going to be a best practice for, for uh, cloud and application architecture that stretches across architectures. But the idea, the more coupled these systems are, um, the more limited they're going to be because they're dependent on each other in the same platform space or in the same application space or in the same virtual machine. If you're decoupling them, it gives you options because you, you can have pieces of the application they're able to run in their own space or run together or run in a cluster or run in a distributed cluster or however you want them to run, which is not going to have as many vulnerabilities. Uh, and it's also going to provide you with architectural options. Since these things are a couple of the database, the applications, the middleware layer, things like that, we can distribute them and run them on the particular platform space that's going to make the most sense for that particular component. Where if it's coupled, you're not going to have that capability. If that's the design, you're going to have to move the entire thing, the data, the application, the middleware, all that kind of stuff from platform to platform. So you want to do things in a decoupled way, and it's going to give you more options if you do. Again, it's a best practice. It's not always going to be the case. You have to look at your particular application, your particular architecture, and your particular requirements to see which ones are going to be right for you. So next would be operational and deployment challenges. Monolithic patterns reemerge when delivering pipelines. Uh, monitoring or rollback procedures are tightly linked 
making independence uh, service deployment or recovery challenging. So the development teams face friction in maintaining agility and reliability in what they should do and the flexibility of the cloud environment. So ultimately, we're looking at these environments as, I'm going to redo this. So this is a redo of uh, operational deployment challenges. So now let's, let's, let's talk about operational and deployment challenges. So monolithic patterns reemerge when delivery pipelines, monitoring and rollback procedures are tightly linked, making independent service deployment or recovery challenging. So the teams face friction in maintaining agility and reliability uh, in you know, trying to live up to the value of a flexible and agile cloud environment. So at the end of the day, when we're operating these systems and doing so in a monolithic way, it's much more difficult to operate monolithic applications because again, there's not going to be any distinction between the data side, the application side, the middleware side, and different piece parts of whatever architecture you're running and how, how you're supporting your solution. And because they're coupled, it's going to be, you know, everything's running well or nothing's running at all because everything is dependent on each other. So the decoupling of these systems, uh, not moving into a monolithic architecture as a choice, a desire, a best practice, will get you away from some of these operational challenges. And ask a cloud ops person, cloud operations person, what they think of this. And they're going to have a nightmare story to tell you about some application that was built many years ago that they're maintaining in the cloud that has a tendency to be really tightly coupled and therefore really difficult to operate. And they're a nightmare for cloud ops teams. So what are some of the best practices for breaking free of monolithic architectures? Well, to truly harness cloud benefits, organizations need to embrace principles such as decentralized data management, independent deployment pipelines, and well-defined service boundaries, adopting domain-driven design, event-driven architectures, and ultimately robust automation. This enables real cloud native success and avoids the monolithic traps. So. Learn from what works out there. Uh, and this is not new stuff. We've been dealing with monolithic architectures, uh, you know, for decades, uh, you know, certainly in my career. And the ability to look at the architectural options that are going to provide the best benefits for your application and therefore the best benefits for the business. You got to remember, that's the objective here. We're not just trying to get something running. That's an easy thing to do. We're get, trying to get something running that's going to be as optimized as possible and is going to bring the most value back to the business. And that's what it's all about. So as people are moving in the cloud and people are building net new applications in the cloud, we have to think objectively in terms of how these things should be architected, when to use a monolithic architecture, which is very few and far between these days, and how to do things in a much more decoupled way. And I think that is going to provide you with the most benefits of cloud computing. However, many of us are dealing with applications been out there for years, and some of them are worth changing and some of them are not. So we have to make a decision in terms of whether we should put those applications and data sets back on prem uh, so they burn less money or we need to break them apart and decouple them and modernize them where they sit on the cloud. And enterprises are facing that right now. So recognizing and addressing hidden monolithic tendencies in cloud architecture ultimately is critical for achieving true scalability and resilience. And ultimately, identifying pitfalls when applying cloud native best practices, organizations can, if they follow those practices, ensure their cloud journeys unlock the promise of agility and efficiency of the cloud. So agility and efficiency of cloud-based platforms is kind of the promise that cloud providers have always made. But that's not going to be a default uh, experience for you uh, unless you're able to take those architectural principles and design your application properly. And that's what happened over the last uh, 15 years. People moved into the cloud. They just thought about the platform they were running on, didn't think about the architecture of the applications that they just moved into the cloud or they built as net new in the cloud, kind of lazy around the architecture stuff and didn't apply any best practices. And the things are just way inefficient. They're burning way too much money based on the value they're bringing back to the business and enterprises are trying to figure that out right now. So don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos on this channel. Also check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. Also my other YouTube show, AI Insights Innovation on the Cube Research YouTube channel. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, you guys stay very, very safe.
Later.